Okay, today we're going to be making fish and chips and the first step is the potatoes. So I've got some potatoes here. This is a variety called Vivaldi and we're just going to peel these. Now you can make chips with the skin on and actually I quite like that but today we're going to go for a more classic chip. So we're taking the skin off. We're of course losing a little bit of fibre and nutrition that way but so be it. Okay I'm making this for two people so I'm going to start off with five potatoes. We'll see how it goes. So I need to cut these potatoes into chips and I need to think about the size of them and if I make them too thin they'll be just crispy potato. If I make them too thick they will be soggy so I'm going to go for a little over a centimetre thick, that's just about a centimetre thick, yeah just a centimetre squared. Future Shrimp here, before we go any further there are three very quick things to say about this video. Firstly I had a lot of trouble with the light in this video due to autumn evenings drawing in. I've done my best to adjust the worst bits for colour balance in post but it's far from perfect so bear that in mind especially in relation to the colours of the food. Nextly, this video is about fish and chips, which is a national dish here in the UK, and a lot of people get really passionate about this, and some might feel that I got something or everything wrong. I've eaten fish and chips from all over this land, and there's very considerable variability, especially the chips. Some like them crunchy, some like them thinner or thicker. I personally like them exactly as I made them here. But what matters when you're cooking for yourself is not how well you adhere to someone else's notional standard, but rather whether you end up making what you imagined that you would make at the outset. There's lots of room for differences of opinion on this and I would love to hear from you about your own personal preferences in the comments. Finally, why am I making fish and chips? Hasn't this been done to death by every other cook and chef? Well, maybe so, but there's a method to my madness. This video is my half of a recipe collab with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. There are links in the card and description that go to his video where he'll make this British classic and give us his impressions of tasting it. Okay, that's all of the interruptions. Let's get on with the cooking. Obviously, some of these are going to be thinner because they're made from the rounded edges of the potato, but we're kind of going for that thickness. So, something like that. So we can judge that. It's, on these potatoes, it's kind of about three cuts that way. And then, yeah, probably two cuts on the end pieces and then three cuts on the middle slice. Okay, and we're going to get these straight into cold water in a pan. Smaller potatoes, I think we'll probably just go for one cut that way and two cuts that way. The idea here is just to try to end up with fairly consistent pieces of potato that are going to cook at the same rate. Probably could have done with a slightly larger pan, but that would be fine. So, got those in a pan of cold water. And now, I'm just going to bring that to the boil and very, very carefully parboil this potato. Okay, so we've got that on the heat. I'm going to put a lid on that. I'm going to go really, really careful with this. I'm going to keep an eye on it because I don't want to overcook this potato or it will just go to mash. So we've just got to partly cook this potato and then drain it. Okay now use a bigger pan than I've used here this is stupid. I've The reason I haven't used my bigger pan is I want to keep it dry for the frying. We don't want them to lose their firmness but what they, all they do is they just lose that kind of apple like crispness that they've got on the surface. So okay so this is the sound when they're not cooked. Okay with the point of a knife and we'll have a listen in a minute for the sound of when they are cooked. Okay, I can tell by smell actually that these are starting to cook now. I can smell cooked potato and I don't know if you can hear that. It's just a duller sound when I scrape it with the point of a knife. Right, so heat off and we drain those and leave them there to dry out and for the steam to leave them. 
So I've got two nice little fillets of haddock. You could use cod, you could use pollock, any kind of white fish. You could use catfish if that's what's available to you. So, but I'm using haddock today and these have been frozen and thawed. So they are gonna be a little bit on the wet side. So I might just pat them with a paper towel first. But while we're waiting for the potatoes, let's make the batter. So I've got half a cup of corn flour or corn starch, you might call that. And I'm gonna to add to that an equal amount of wheat flour plain wheat flour about half a cup now not giving the actual weights here because really all that matters here is that we get the volumes equal of cornstarch and wheat flour because we're going to mix the actual batter pretty much by eye i'm going to put a tiny pinch of turmeric in there just to give it some golden color that is optional but it will just help to make this batter a little bit more golden and I'm just gonna have a tiny pinch of salt in there not too much because we will be adding salt at the table so just going to combine those dry ingredients first before we add any liquid this batter contains no egg and that's one of the things that will make it really really crispy and we're going to add beer to this. Now I've, I'm using a ruby ale here. You can kind of use any beer you like here. Um, a lot of beer batters use lager. I'm just using this. It doesn't make a lot of difference because you're not really going to taste the beer. You do a little bit in the batter, but not as much as people might imagine. So I'm just going to add a bit of beer and then start making a batter. And this is the point where we're just going to play it by ear keep combining the ingredients until we end up with something that looks about like what we want and I'll show you the consistency we're trying to get to so at the moment it's far too claggy but the trick is not to add too much liquid because we want quite a sticky batter it's a little bit on the heavy side so just a bit more liquid And that's good so we've got a batter that kind of you can pick it up with a fork but it will run through the fork because it's got cornstarch in there when you stir it it feels thicker than it actually will be because of that whole non-newtonian thing that cornstarch does but there we go so we've got a batter that's kind of semi-liquid that's about right okay rest of that beer i'll have that later we're going to leave that to stand for a moment because the starches in there will develop a little bit in that batter. So the chips are almost ready to go in the oil now. So just show you what I've got here. So these chips are kind of a little bit bendy, but they're still quite firm. And if you scrape them with your fingernail, you do find that they are a little bit doughy on the surface, but they're not falling apart. So I'm just going to give those a little shake in case any bits of them are wet or anything like that. And give them a chance to be exposed to the air to dry out because we don't want to put water into hot fat okay frying in vegetable oil some people prefer to fry in beef tallow or lard but i'm going to be frying in vegetable oil I'm going to fill that pan no more than half full and we'll put that on the heat so i saved a little bit of the potato peel we can use that for testing the oil just to see if it's up to temperature. No, it's definitely not yet. Although it is coming up to temperature. You can see a little bit of bubbling when I put that in there, but not quite enough. It's gonna be a little while longer, just a minute or two longer to get up to temperature. Okay, and we'll just test that again. Yep, I'd say we're there now because that's almost immediately bubbling the moment we put it in the fat. So, I'm not going to put all of my chips in at once. I'm going to do these in maybe three batches. So, carefully put the chips into the oil and just move them around to stop them sticking as soon as they're in there. And that looks about right in terms of the amount of bubbling and activity we should see. And we'll cook those chips until they're crispy and golden. 
So while those chips are cooking, let's just talk about other things we're going to have with it. I'm having mushy peas with my fish and chips because I really like mushy peas. These are marrow fat peas, so they're a kind of really mealy, starchy pea that's been cooked and partly mashed to make what we call mushy peas, and it's really delicious. You can buy tins of marrow fat peas that have not been mashed, and some people like them that way. I think Jenny's going to have fresh garden peas with hers. That's just her preference. Okay, so I think I'm going to call those done. So out they come. And on to some kitchen paper towel to drain. Just to drain off any excess fat. They smell great. Nice and golden. And in with the next batch. So let's just have a close look at those. So they've gone golden, but not in any way burnt. And, well, they're too hot to handle at the moment, but when we have a look at them in a minute, we're gonna see that they're fluffy and cooked inside. So while this last batch of chips is cooking, let's go and get the fish ready. Before we do the fish, let's just have a quick look at one of these chips. So crispy and kind of rustling on the outside. And when we open up inside, fluffy, and floury in the middle. Let's have a taste. It's really too hot to eat. Ha! Huh. Yeah, that's good. So the fish, I'm just going to pat it dry a little bit with a bit of kitchen paper towel. And then I'm just going to give it a little dust with flour. This is really just to remove any surface wetness so that the batter can stick to it properly. Just dusted those fillets of fish with flour. Lovely. And we're going to drop them into the batter like that. Leave them there for a moment and then flip them over. So to avoid getting my hands in a mess, I'm going to use tongs for this, but we're just going to move that fish around in the batter until it's got a good even coating. And we'll have a look at these mushy peas as well. Weird stuff in a can. There is a weird stuff in a can episode about mushy peas, so link in this card here. No pull tab on the can. I guess we'll have to use a can opener then. And that's what mushy peas look like. Ew, gross, I know. So I'm just gonna put them on a back burner of the stove and give them a little warm through. Now, the really critical part, the fish. So, straight out of the batter. Try and get rid of any little tails of batter and straight into the hot oil. Now, ideally that should float up. And second one, straight out the batter into the hot oil and we're just going to hold it there so it doesn't stick to the bottom too much. Really I think my pan here is a bit too shallow. But we'll see, I think they got away with that. Okay, I think that's done. So, let's have a look. Look at that. And that sound the oil is making means it's a little bit on the hot side. So there we go, two very, very nice crispy battered fillets of haddock. Right, let's get this served up. So one of the fillets is slightly nicer looking than the other, so we'll give Jenny the neater one. And a bunch of chips. So, fish and chips, Jenny's got green peas. I've got really green peas, mushy peas. I do love mushy peas. And then we just have a little dash of vinegar on the chips. A bit of salt. Bit of pepper. 
So, the all important taste test. So the fish, the batter is crisp, the fish inside is flaky and moist, but fully cooked. Let's have a taste of that. Mm, happy with that. The chips, soft and fluffy on the inside, and still just a little bit crisp on the outside. That's a proper chip shop chip, I would say. What do you reckon, Jenny? Yeah. Nailed it? Yeah, it's nice. Almost forgot about my beer. Now, one thing I really like with chips, now you're gonna think this is carnage because it's carbs on carbs. But I really like to make a chip butty. And for that, we need white bread. A generous spread of butter and then we just line up some chips in there and yep this is carbs on carbs but you know once in a while won't kill you and if it does you'll die happy let's give that that a taste mm. so there we go that's homemade fish and chips with mushy peas kind of authentic beer battered haddock and a chip butty with salt and vinegar. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.